Hi everyone, welcome to the first module of the Facebook marketing course, which is on an introduction to marketing. My name is Rohit Uttam Chandani and I'm going to be your trainer for this module. The objective of this module is to help you learn the fundamentals of marketing to grow your business. To give you an overview of what we're going to cover today, we'll first be talking about how you can get your marketing to deliver ROI or return on investment for your business by clearly defining business objectives. We'll then talk about how you can define USPs or unique selling propositions for your business to help you stand out from your competition. We'll discuss how you can clearly define and visualize your target audience, the audience you want to reach out to for your business, your customers and prospects. And then we'll show you how you can plan and budget better for your marketing using what we call the marketing funnel. Right, so these are the four areas that we'll be talking about today and we'll get started with the first which is how do you deliver the right ROI for your business by focusing on business objectives. Before you get into any marketing activity, it is important that you clearly define what your objective for that activity is. I always tell this to business I work with, getting into any kind of marketing activity without having a clearly defined business objective is like getting into a cab and telling the driver I don't know where I want to go. He will take you all over the city, you will end up paying him a bomb and you will end up going nowhere. This is exactly what happens when you get into any kind of marketing without clearly defining what you want to achieve out of it. You will end up blowing up money and get little to no results. This is why it's extremely important for you to clearly define what you want to achieve for your business before you get started with your marketing. So what I want all of you to do right now is to pause this video for a few minutes and think through what exactly do you want to achieve with your business? Where is it that you want to go? What exactly do you want to do? So take a minute or a few minutes, pull out a pen and paper and write down all the objectives that you want to achieve with your business. Right guys? So pause the video, write this down and then come back and restart it. Great guys, so hope all of you have put down what you want to achieve with your business. Like I told you, this is extremely important. So those of you who have not done it yet, you still have time, please pause the video, write it and come back. So now let's look at what are the different business objectives that brands and businesses can have. The first one is raising brand awareness, building visibility and top of mind recall for your brand. Next is generating leads, inquiries, getting people to come and inquire for your product, for your service. Next is increasing local sales. So if you have an offline business, something like a restaurant, a coffee shop, a salon, a spa, a retail outlet, then you'd want people to walk into your store and make purchases. So this would be your objective in that case. Next is driving online sales. This is for those of you who have e-commerce businesses where you sell online. So your objective would be to get people to come to your website and make purchases from you. And the last one is promoting your app. So for those of you who have mobile apps for your businesses or have app only businesses, your objective would be to get people to install your app and to constantly engage with it. Right? So if you look at the list of objectives that you put down, which I hope each one of you did, you'll find that all your objectives would fall under the five of these that you see here. Right, so now that we've looked at the five different key business objectives that a brand can have, let's look at each one of these in detail and also understand how we can use Facebook to achieve each one of them. So the first one is brand awareness. So why do you need brand awareness in the first place? Why does a business need to raise brand awareness and drive visibility? Brand awareness is the first step for any business because you need to let people know what your business actually does. If they don't know you exist, how would they ever buy your product or subscribe to your service? And if they don't do that, you would never make any revenue. So brand awareness helps you get your business in front of people. Not only that, it also helps you build brand visibility in the long term and build what we call top of mind recall. So when somebody wants to buy a product or a service that you sell, 
your business should be the first business that should come to their mind and over a period of time as you build a relationship with people they feel more connected to your business and they are more likely to choose your products and services so now that we've understood why raising brand awareness is so important let's look at how facebook can help you achieve this objective with facebook you can reach people who matter to your business the most and let them discover your brand while they're scrolling through their feeds they would see your brand your brand story there and people who didn't know about you earlier would then be aware of your existence as well as the products and services that you have to offer facebook also helps you deliver your brand message to the right audience it helps you tell your brand story using engaging videos and pictures you can reach the right audience on facebook through a wide array of targeting op- options that facebook offers you through a wide array of targeting options that facebook offers you facebook will also help you reach people wherever they are on their customer journey we'll be talking about this customer journey a little later in this module and i will show you how facebook can help you at every stage of this customer journey so let's take an example of a business here that wants to build brand awareness in fact we'll be taking examples of businesses for every objective that we discuss and these business examples will be used right through the course so this is navya photo studio a photography house that wants to build awareness and visibility for its brand so if this business was around so if this business was around let's say 20 years ago in 1997 in order to build brand awareness they would probably advertise in newspapers and magazines relevant magazines or they would rely on friend and family so if this business were around let's say 20 years ago in 1997 they would rely on ads in magazines and newspapers or on their customers talking about them to their friends and family to drive awareness for their brand today they could do it through what we call online word of mouth they could get in front of people when they are browsing their facebook feeds and when people share what they post it automatically gets in front of their friends and family as well so over the duration of this course you'll understand how you can use facebook effectively to drive brand awareness visibility and top of mind recall the next objective is lead generation so why do you need to generate leads in the first place generating leads helps you find people who are interested in your product or service and get them to inquire about them through facebook you can make it extremely easy for people to request you for information or to leave their contact details which makes it much easier for you as a business to generate inquiries so how does facebook help you generate leads on facebook you can get people to request a newsletter subscription so they could sign up for a newsletter for your blog newsletter they could request a quote for your product or service they could request a demo and all this with just a few clicks on any device these are done through lead forms that open within facebook itself which we'll be discussing as the course progresses in a few later modules you can also customize these forms that i just told you about to get information that really matters to you you can ask open ended questions for example if you're a real estate business selling an apartment you could ask people what their budget is and they could enter it in the form or let's say you have apartments villas and plots to sell so you could ask them a multiple choice question on what they would prefer buy you could then integrate these forms with your crm to get your leads in real time so that your sales team can take immediate action these lead forms are a very powerful feature of facebook and we'll be discussing it in absolute detail as the course progresses you will learn step by step how you can use this feature to effectively and efficiently generate leads and inquiries for your business so here's an example of a business whose key objective is to generate leads so this is alpha academy a tuition center so their objective is to reach out to parents with kids who would require tuitions that they offer so if this business was around 20 years ago they would rely on parents and mom group recommendations where when moms would meet let's say after school when they pick up their kids they would discuss tuition then one mom would tell another saying that okay this is where i am sending my kid and you might want to send them there as well so that would probably be their key source of generating interest 
and inquiries for their business. Today, as consumers have all moved online, Alpha Academy could use search so that they show up when people search for a tuition center and they could also show up in parents' news feeds when they are browsing Facebook from where parents could directly drop an inquiry using the lead forms that we just discussed. The next objective is increasing footfall and local sales. So this is for offline businesses that I told you about a little while back. For those of you who have restaurants, coffee shops, salons, spas, any retail outlet where you need people to actually walk into a physical brick and mortar store. So you would want to reach out to people who would require your products or your service and get them to walk in to your outlets. The best way to bring people to your store is to reach out to them when they're actually in the vicinity, when they are around you, based on their mobile device location. If you can target users when they are right near you, that would be the best time to get in front of them and get them to walk in. So how does Facebook help you increase local sales? You can create targeted advertisements on Facebook, the right audience for your business based on their demographics, behaviors and interests and reach them when they are near your business. And that's the most important aspect. You can reach exactly the right audience you want at the right time when they are located near you. So when a potential prospect is somewhere around your business, they will see your post on their newsfeed and they could then click on it, get directions and walk into your outlet, branch or store. This helps you get real results. So this is an example of a business that would require people to walk in. It's a cupcake shop and as the name indicates a shop that sells cupcakes. So 20 years ago if cupcake shop wanted to get people to walk in, they would have to wait people, wait. They would have to wait for people to walk past the store. They would have notice and then walk in or again rely on word of mouth to get more and more people to walk in. Today cupcake shop can effectively leverage social media to get in front of their target audiences. Like we just discussed, they can reach people on Facebook. They can reach their relevant audience who love cupcakes, love desserts on Facebook when they are in the vicinity of the cupcake shop, of the cupcake shop. The next objective is driving online sales. So if you have a website that sells online, you would want to drive more and more potential customers to your website so they would buy and you would grow your revenue. When you bring relevant customers to your website through the effective targeting that Facebook offers you, you are more likely to convert them to customers and drive sales on your website. So how does Facebook help you drive online sales? You can reach people on Facebook when they are actively engaged, either on their desktops or on their tablets and smartphones. You can then get them to click from Facebook to your website and make a purchase. You can also very effectively measure and track how your ads are performing and you can constantly create new ads for different products and services that you offer. You will learn how to do this as well effectively as the course progresses. So let's look at an example here of a brand that wants to drive online sales. So this is Love Love Jeans, a retailer that sells jeans online. 20 years ago, the only option they would have had was to have an offline store or a retail outlet and get people to walk into their store and buy the jeans in person. Today, they can set up a website, reach out to relevant people through the Facebook feed, get them to click through to their website so people can buy from the convenience of their homes without having to actually drive into a store. The last objective is promoting your app. So for those of you who have apps for your business, you want to promote it so you can increase app downloads, get more and more people to install your app and use it. You would also want to promote your app so you can keep your audience engaged so they keep using your app. Because if people install your app and don't use it, they would sooner or later delete it from their phone. And that's not something that you want. So you would promote your app to people who have it installed so you can constantly keep them engaged and retain them for longer. So you would promote your app both to drive acquisition of new users as well as to retain existing users. How does Facebook help you do this? So on Facebook, you can reach your relevant target audience through the different extremely accurate targeting options that Facebook gives you. 
So we'll be talking about these targeting options in a later module. Once you've got these people to install your app, you can then engage with them or get them to open your app and take specific action using Facebook ads. You can also track the effectiveness of Facebook ads with regards to the installs that you're getting and how many of those installs result in sales on your app or even the most engaged users on your app. So again, we look at this in more detail in a later module. So here's an example of a mobile app, which is a game called League of Lions. So 20 years ago, the only option the game would have was to be at a game store where people interested in gaming could go and buy it. Today, they can drive downloads of their app online by reaching out to their target audiences on Facebook. So now that we've understood the five different business objectives in detail, which is driving brand awareness, lead generation, store walk-ins, online sales, and app installs. Let's interpret these in the context to what customers really want. So we have an activity for you here. On the left, we have all the business objectives that we just discussed. And on the right, we have what customers want. So what, what I want you guys to do now is to pick up your pen and notebook again, write down the objective on the left, which is raise brand awareness, and then pick the customer need on the right that fits this objective and write it below that. Right, so pick up each objective, which is in the left column, pick up the most relevant customer need that matches this objective and write it below that. So this is very similar to the match the following that you would have done when you were in school. So you need to match the column on the left with the relevant column on the right. So I'm gonna do one for you right now as an example. So raising brand awareness would match with, I want customers to know what my business does and be top of my entry call, which is what we just discussed. We spoke about how we want to raise brand awareness to drive visibility, drive top of mind recall. So when customers buy a product, subscribe to a service, our brand is the first brand that comes to their mind. Right, so now that we've done one example, I want you guys to pause the video, do the other four, and then come back. Right, so go ahead guys, pause the video, do these four, and then come back. Great guys, so hope you've finished matching the columns. Let's discuss it now. Generating lead is wanting people to find, wanting to find people who are interested in your product or service. Increasing local sales, as we discussed, is wanting to get customers to walk into your brick and mortar store. Driving online sales is wanting your customers to come to your website and place orders. Promoting your app, as it as the name indicates, is to want customers to download and use your app. Right, so hope all of you got all of these right. Let's move on to a summary of all the business objectives that we just discussed. So these are the five key objectives. Raising brand awareness, generating leads, increasing local sales, driving online sales, and promoting your app. So what I want you to do now is to pick the single most relevant objective that you want to achieve for your business. You could even pick multiple objectives. For example, you could pick raising brand awareness as well as generating leads. Right? If you want to do both, then you could pick both. And right? if you want to raise brand awareness and also drive online sales, you could pick those two as well. So pick the objectives and write them down in your notebook because these are the two clearly defined objectives that you would go after. Great guys, now that you've defined your objectives clearly and you also understood why it is extremely important to have them clearly defined, let's move on to understanding how we can stand out from our competition. How do we find those unique selling points or USPs that would help us differentiate ourselves and our businesses from other competitors? So to understand why USPs are important in the first place, let's have a quick activity. I'm gonna show you two brands, which I'm sure all of you have heard of, which is Pepsi and Coke. Now I want you to pause the video for a minute, write down out of these two brands, which brand do you, do you prefer? So when you go out and somebody asks you, what soft drink would you prefer? What is the first name that comes to your mind? Is it Pepsi or is it Coke? So write that down and also write down why is it that you prefer one over the other. So if it's Pepsi, then why do you like Pepsi? And if it's Coke, then why do you like Coke? Why is it that that's the first thing that comes to your mind when somebody asks you for a soft drink? So now that you guys have put this down, let's understand why a brand USP is so important and how it helps influence that top of mind recall. The first thing is when you are clear about your brand's unique selling points, it helps you to target your audience 
more effectively with those points. The second thing is it creates preference and brand affinity. When people know the clear reasons that set you apart from your competition, they are more likely to prefer you for them and they are more likely to be better connected to your brand. As we said, having your USPs clearly defined helps you clearly differentiate your brand from your competition in the minds of your target audience. And the fourth one and very important, USPs help you clearly define your brand identity. Every brand has an identity, every brand stands for something. Every brand is associated with certain attributes, which we call brand attributes. And having your USPs clearly defined will also help you to clearly define those brand attributes, which your target audience can then effectively associate with. And all this put, and all this put together helps you drive brand visibility, create affinity, and build top of mind recall. So what we're going to do now is another activity that will help you define your USPs to help you communicate them effectively to your audience and in the process beat your competition. So I'm going to take you through a whole bunch of USPs that a business could probably have and you would pick the top three where you are much, much better than your competition. So the first one is product or service. Do you have a product or a service? that is much better than what your competition could offer. Do you have associated services or auxiliary services which you could provide to your customers that give you an edge over your competition? So for example, let's say along with your main service, you could offer your customers additional services which would add additional value to them. Then that could be a clear USP for your brand. Do you have a convenient location? This is especially for those of you who are into offline businesses. Is your location giving you an advantage over competition. Availability of a product. Do you have products available all the time? You never have out of stock issues, but your competition does. Next is uniqueness. So do you have a product that's absolutely unique that nobody else in the market has? Do you offer the best technical support? Do you have a much wider selection or range of products as compared to your competition? Do you offer a guarantee or a warranty period that either your competition doesn't or do you offer it for a longer period? Do you have free gifts that you give with purchases? Gifts that would entice your customers to buy? Gifts that would add additional value to the product that you're giving them? Do you have the best payment terms? Do you, for example, offer EMIs that your competition doesn't? Do you offer credit that your competition doesn't? Especially for those of you who are into B2B businesses. Do you offer a longer credit period? Let's say you offer 60 days credit while your competition only offers 30 or 45. Are you better priced as compared to your competition? Do you have the best priced product or service in the market? Do you win on quality? Is your product by far the best quality product that a customer can find in that segment? Next is perceived value. Perceived value is how much your customers think your product is worth to them. So have you been able to create a higher perceived value as compared to your competition? Do you have stronger branding? Do you have the advantage of being a brand where you already have a fair bit of top of mind recall, which gives you an edge over your competition when it comes to, let's say, a new product that you're launching. Does your product offer a better performance? And do you offer your customers any referral deals where they could refer people they know and save money on their purchase? So that's a whole bunch of potential USPs that you could pick from. So what I want you guys to do now is to Pick the top three facets out of these where you see yourself beating your competition and write them down in your notebook. To help you do this better, let's say that you are hiring for your company. So what would you tell them to inspire them to be part of your team? What would you tell them are the key reasons that makes your brand and your company stand out from other companies in the market? So pause the video for a few minutes. Think through which of these are your strongest selling points and put them down in your notebook. Once you're done, you can come back and restart the video. Great guys, so now that you've understood what USPs are and why they're extremely important for a business to have and have them clearly defined, let's look at the key takeaways from this section on USPs. The first thing is, as all of you know and as we just discussed, each business has its own unique set of differentiators, which we call USPs. These USPs describes to customers why the business stands out and why they should choose the business as against competition. So I hope you guys have defined your USPs by now. 
So now you have your objective clearly defined. You also have your USPs clearly defined. Let's now move on to understanding our target audience. And how do we define our audience so we ensure that we are reaching out to the right customers online? Before we go further into this, here's another activity for you guys. So for your business, I want you to clearly define who is the audience that you want to reach out to. So pull out your pen and notebook and define in as much detail as you can who your target audience is. Who are those prospects that you want to go after? Who is your customer? So you can pause the video, define your audience, and then come back so we can discuss it. Great guys, so hope all of you have defined your target audience. This is extremely important because if you don't know your audience, how will you reach out to them? How will you know, for example, what content would engage them? How will you know where online can you reach them? How will you know what targeting options that we have in Facebook ads that we'll be talking about as the course progresses? How will you know which of these options you can use to reach out to your audience? This is exactly why one of the first few steps in a marketing strategy is to have your audience profiles clearly defined. So those of you who have not done it yet, you still have a chance to pause the video and do it now. So please do it because it's extremely important. And once you do it, you can come back. Great. So all of you have defined your target audiences. So let's look at how do we go about defining these and then you can check which of these you have covered in your, note, in your notebook. So the first thing and the most common way to define an audience is by demographics. And I'm sure most of you would have put down their age, their gender, where would they be located. So let's say, for example, your audience would be 25 to 45 years of age. Gender would be the male or female, for example. Right? Located probably, let's say, in certain cities. Maybe you only want to target people in, in metro cities, so you'd only have the metro cities listed. So in fact, as we discuss this, those of you who want to correct your audience definitions as we go along, you can keep pausing the video, making your corrections in your notebook or additions, if not corrections. Next is behavior. Demographics alone is not enough, right? Demographic audience definitions are extremely basic in the online space because there are so many data points that you can use. You have to be more detailed in your definitions. For example, what would your audience buy? What kind of products would they shop for? What kind of services would they subscribe to? What kind of phone do they use? Right? Do they use an iPhone? Do they use an Android? Right? Would they most likely use premium phones? Right? Would they most likely use high-end smartphones? Or would they use budget smart or feature phones? Which sites would they visit online? What kind of blogs would they read? Right? Do they shop online? All of these, these are behaviors. Right? Do they travel frequently? Do they travel within India? Do they travel internationally? These are questions that you'll ask yourself and you would write down in absolute detail anything and everything that you think would be a trait of your target customer. Then you would also look at their interests. What would they be interested in? Right? Are they interested in movies? Do they have pets? Do they love reading? Do they love food? Are they foodies? Do they love to travel? Do they have specific niche interests? For example, would they like to play golf? All of this. So now that we've covered this framework, you guys can go back to what you wrote and make additions accordingly. So you can add more points to help you define your audience. Apart from just demographics, you can add your behaviors, add interests. So you have a very detailed audience persona that you would have defined. So let's take an example now. This is a business. It's a Chinese restaurant called the Chinese Hut. So let's see how this restaurant would define their target audience what are the different ways or the different audience segments that they could define. So demographics. So this business says that their audience are young working professionals could be either male or female aged 18 to 30 years behaviors and interests as per their audience definition. So they could be on mobile phones, browsing Facebook on their mobiles. They could be looking for places to eat out. For example, people who work late hours, they want to either go out and eat or order food to their workplaces. Could be people, let's say young couples, for example, who prefer eating out rather than cooking at home. Let's say young couple, both of them working, might want to probably eat out more often. So this is their definition of their audience, right? You could even add more here. You could probably even add people who are traveling in a particular city and have to eat out. So you could also reach out to those people. You could also reach out to people who, who particularly like Chinese food. So there are some people who their favorite cuisine is Chinese. 
so you could target people with interests in chinese food for example so you could keep going on and on in making your target audience definition more and more detailed so to help you do this better and to give you more idea into how you can go about this think through who do you really want to sell to right as i told you think through who your target customer or your prospects really are right where would they belong where what's their location where would they stay which city which region which state what are their age gender interests what languages do they speak for example right what are their interests could be music film sports hundreds of other interests could be niche interests right like i told you behaviors do they shop online do they love to exercise do they love gymming do they travel for business do they travel for leisure do they love eating out are they in any way connected to people who already like your brand so all these options that you see here that you'll use to define your audience are all options that you have in facebook ads to reach out to them when you look at facebook ad targeting in a later module you'll see that facebook ads gives you all these options you can target people by their location you can target by demographics by their interests by their behaviors by their connections you have all of this which you'll look at in more detail in a later module so now that all of you have defined your target audience in detail right your key takeaway is this is extremely important because you need to know your customer in order to reach them effectively you need to know your customer in order to strike a chord with them in order to connect with them in order to build a relationship with them right so now that we have understood how we can define the objectives for our business which all of you have done so all of you now have your business objectives clearly defined you have your unique selling points in place you defined your target audience now let's look at the marketing funnel right how do you and your marketing budget better by thinking through your customer journey so how many of you knew that every customer before they buy a product or subscribe to a service or walk into your store actually goes through a decision making journey where they are making this decision on what to buy where to buy this journey is what we call the customer journey or the path to purchase or the marketing funnel right if you look at this here this purchase journey is shaped like a funnel and you'll understand it as we go further which is why it's also called the marketing funnel so let's understand this with an example let's say nidhi wants to get dinner so the first thing that comes to mind is she first thinks through what kind of food does she want right this is the first stage of the journey or the path to purchase she going to think through, okay do i want to get pizza or do i feel like having noodles do i feel like having rice tonight then she let's say finally she decides okay she wants to have noodles she's in the mood for some chinese food next she would think through all the restaurants that she's aware of so she's like okay i want to eat chinese what are the chinese restaurants that i know okay i know there's veggie noodle station i know chinese hut i know the chef noodle so which one do i pick which one do i order from today or which one do i go to today so these are restaurants that have built awareness and top of mind recall in nidhi's mind she is aware of them now to make a choice of which restaurant to go to the next step in her decision making journey or in her path to purchase is she would decide where to go depending on different factors right in this particular case it could be price let's say that one restaurant is more pricey than another and today let's say she wants to not spend too much and she wants to go to a place which is more reasonable so one is the price factor next is the quality of food so she feels that one restaurant has better quality than the other and third is the menu choice so which restaurant is going to give her more noodle options to choose from is where she end up going so she's in the consideration stage thinking through where to go and at this stage if the chinese hut can convince nidhi to pick them either by getting in front of her at that moment let's say during this process when she's thinking through what to eat if she's browsing through her facebook news feed and she's the, she sees this ad or a post from chinese hut that says 50% off on dinner if you walk in tonight right what are they trying to do here is they trying to influence her decision making process and let's say she finds this to be an interesting offer she thinks she's like okay i want to eat chinese today and i'm getting 50% off here let me just go here in which case she would then either order from them or walk in to the restaurant and have dinner there right so this customer journey or this path to purchase 
that you just saw Nidhi go through is what we call the marketing fund, right? The awareness stage is when you as a business try to get in front of your target audience and build awareness, build visibility, top of mind recall. Next is once you build awareness, once you've built awareness with your target audience at the consideration stage, when they are thinking of buying your product or subscribing to your service, you would then get in front of them with a different communication. So let's say the awareness stage, Chinese Heart would probably build awareness with posts and ads that talks about their USPs, right, which we just defined. So for Chinese Heart, it could be, let's say a wide variety of Chinese food. Right? It could be many options that no other Chinese restaurant in the city has to offer. It could be some special items on the menu that only their chef has. Right? All these is what they would use to build awareness. At the consideration stage is where they would reach out to customers who are already aware with discounts, with offers, right? with food fests. Let's say they have a, a special Sichuan food festival at their Chinese restaurant. Then they would reach out to this audience, which is already aware about them and is at the consideration stage. And the last is the conversion stage where they could either have an ad that has a get directions call to action button where people could click and get directions to the restaurant, right? In case of an e-commerce business, the last stage is where they would get people to click on the ad, go to their website and buy. Right? So this is the funnel. And as a marketer at every stage of the funnel, you will reach out to relevant audiences with relevant communication. Your communication and your strategy would be different for different customers at different stage of this decision making process. Irrespective of what business type you are in, all your customers would go through this journey. So be it Navya Photo Studio, for example, which we discussed earlier, or the Cupcake Shop or Love Love Jeans, all three which we've discussed earlier in this module all their customers would go through this journey, right? This marketing funnel or part to purchase or customer journey is something that every customer for every business product or service would go through. And throughout this journey is where you as a marketer can influence them. Like I told you at every stage of their purchase journey, you would try to influence them with tailored messaging and communication. So here are your key takeaways from this section of the module on the marketing funnel. The first one, like we discussed, is clearly picture your customer's journey in the marketing funnel. Write this down, think through the entire decision-making process that your customer for your business would go through. Then think through for each stage of the funnel, what messaging, what communication will you use to connect with them. And throughout this journey, you would influence them to come to your business and buy your products or subscribe to your service, right? So now that we've covered all the sections that we had on the agenda for this module, let's do a recap of what we've covered and then wrap up the module. So like we discussed, Facebook can help you in your marketing right through the customer journey or the marketing funnel and with each of these, and with each of these objectives that you see here, raising brand awareness, generating leads, increasing local sales, driving online sales and promoting your app. We've discussed all these in detail and you already have these defined for yourself as well. You also defined your USPs and your target audience personas. You also learned how you can reach out to people at different stages of their part to purchase. At every stage, Facebook has tools to help you. So at the awareness stage, you could use video ads to build awareness. Let's say your video about your brand, about your product, about a service you could target this video to a relevant audience to build awareness, visibility and recall. At the consideration stage, you could use ads like these, which are called carousel ads, which you'll also learn about in more detail in a later module. These ads help to influence consideration and drive interest in the minds of the audience that is already aware about your brand. Apart from this, there are other tools and formats that you can use as well. These are just examples. You'll learn more about all these formats in later modules. As the last step, at the conversion stage, you could use a lead ad like what you see there. People click and then it opens a form like what you see on the screen now, which is pre-filled by Facebook. 
especially the name and number and then people can submit this form on Facebook and you as an advertiser and a marketer can capture this lead. So you'll also learn a lot more about lead ads in detail in later modules. So to summarize it all, you've defined your business objectives. You have your unique selling points in place. You've clearly defined your audience persona and you've learned how you can use the marketing funnel to reach out to audiences at different stage, at different stages of their purchase journey. Great guys. So thank you so much for being part of this lesson on an introduction to marketing. And I look forward to catching you again in a later module. Thank you.